Be sure to check out the new album from Inverter, the satanic polka band that I front. Hey, it's Deke. Welcome to the show from a treehouse full of whiskey, maiden posters, weird trinkety things. And this week, guitarist and founding member Jay Fortin of Scissor Fight. All right, Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, glad to be here. Yeah, okay. we're psyched to have you, man. This is gonna be fun. For starters, I have to say it's probably the first Treehouse interview you've ever done in our whimsical domain here. Yes, it absolutely <laughs> is. Um, and that's the whole point. The place is, uh, let's see, 56 square feet. Of rock. <laughs> but Scissor Fight, Jay is the guitarist for Scissor Fight. Um, you guys have been around since about 1995, I believe. Uh, 1893, 1893, actually. okay, yeah. I stand corrected, <laughs> yes. Deep from the bowels of Mount Washington in New yeah. Hampshire. So you guys were playing very actively. You've released something like almost 10 albums if you count the EPs, maybe more than that, I don't know. I think it's, yeah, it's around 10. There's a seven inch or two in the mix, not to mention compilations, but um, kicking total and complete butt up to about 2006. Not only did you have a regional following, but quite the international following. You played overseas a couple times. Yeah. And then in 2006, all of a sudden, poof, you just kind of mysteriously it's vanished, scary. like yeah. Amelia Earhart style, yeah. like Scissor Fight disappeared. <laughs> yeah. And there were a lot of people in the greater Boston scene wondering what the hell happened. Uh, I've heard reports uh, like speculation or people had last seen iron lung, you know, alien spear abductions, fishing, yeah, yeah. alien abdu abductions, spear fishing in the Amazon. He's on some desert island somewhere. And the rest of you guys, like there was, you know, no one had really heard much from you aside from the side projects, we get to that. But why 10 years later, all of a sudden is Scissor Fight back together? Well, I think after that long that, uh, Jarvis and I finally f realized that this is what we should be doing instead of, you know, messing around with all these other side project bands and whatnot. So, and uh, I kept hearing all over the place in person or online, uh, just tons of interest in the band still, you know, maybe more than before. Yeah. Um, and uh, so uh, we started thinking about we, that we need to address that. <laughs> now, it, with this new lineup now, which anyone familiar with you guys and knowing that you're back probably knows this already. There, uh, I gotta imagine all along, there were, you know, I, and I saw it online too with some of your videos, there were people asking, when will Scissor Fight be back? When yeah. will they be back? Was it torturous to not be back? Because I know, or so, so I hear you approached Chris Ironlung and Kevin, his brother, to get back together, but apparently they, they weren't interested? Well, we... I think after the first two, three years, maybe, uh, that of not hearing from Chris really, um, it was just kind of starting to be assumed that he wasn't interested. Kevin always seemed to be interested, but only with his brother. I got you, yeah. You know? There was a couple of attempts to kind of kickstart that, you know, over the years. Um, but uh, it just, nothing ever happened, you know? No interest, I guess. Scissor Fight, which probably was you know, united initially through beer and other substances, fast forward many years later, the impetus or the uh, decisive moment that got you back together was kind of revolved around beer yet again. Yes, absolutely. Um, the uh, Smutty Nose Beer Company was interested in uh, doing a Scissor Fight beer. And so they approached, you know, they approached us and of course they just said, can we do this? And of course I said, yeah, of course. You yeah, know, yeah. Which, Beer, yes. Exclamation think? point five times. Yeah. And, um, you know, we decided to call it Granite State Destroyer and, yeah, I love it. and make it, I told them, you know, they asked like, well, what kind of beer do you want it to be? You know? And I said, well, something similar to, you know, Paps Blue Ribbon, you know, okay, in, yeah, in yeah. whatever that kind of beer is called, you know. Yeah. And that's what they did. So they they made a uh, 
they called it an imperial corn lager. Okay. So it was a it was a, a tasty malt liquor with with a pretty high alcohol content. As you say, it'd be very disappointing if the beer came out and with the imagery that you know image and rep you guys have it. It was like some very light wussy Zima like drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the granite street destroyer, yeah. and it tastes like Mad Dog watermelon or something. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. I haven't had it yet, but I've actually heard good things and. I was Smutty Nose or one of them did a tree beer as well. There's a tree beer out there. There's a tree beer. Oh, it's Blue not... Hills. Blue yeah. Hills Brewery does yeah. that one. There's a Sam Black beer. There's somewhere. a Clutch beer someone did yeah. down south as well. That's pretty cool. Of course, the Scissor Fight beer is far superior to those. <laughs> um. <laughs> you can honestly and modestly say that. Um, now that there's a new album out, and I want to give a, uh, you a chance to talk about this. It's an EP, uh, Chaos County. It's called, yeah. and you guys, which is named, sorry, after. Coos County, which is the the uppermost. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, uh, county in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. It's C O O S. A lot of people call it Coos County. So it's a spin on that. You guys are always very, uh, always paying tribute to New Hampshire in the you know yeah. the, the deep, obscure history of lyrically too. Um, and I'll get to lyrics in a bit in, in songwriting. But you guys have a knack for writing these not only catchy riffs and hooks, but lyrically that. Giardia on my mind track, yeah. the chorus of that, and I saw you guys the other night at the Middle East. It's like instantly becomes ingrained in your head, much like you know the ballad of Jaco Macaco and some of those other tracks, uh, just yeah. like instantly yeah. infectious. What's the well? Let's get to that right now. What's the songwriting process around that or with the with uh, the new lineup? It's well, it's all. It always starts with the the music, some riff or something that I cooked up, and then we. I bring it to practice. Sometimes, sometimes it's a riff that just happens as soon the first time I plug in the guitar and turn it on. Yeah. Whatever the first thing I play turns into a song. You know, it happens that way. But so usually it's a it's music first, and then we'll we'll work out the tune uh, at practice. And Doug will just he'll just start kind of you know doing scratch vocal ideas as we're writing the song okay and um and then after we get something done we'll you know take take a recording of it home and uh refine it yeah and, and work on the lyrics yeah and, and sometimes it's it's all him some you know it's this time around it's jarvis and and doug have worked on lyrics together and uh you know i might kick in a line or a song title here too but so it's you know, it's more of a uh, everybody's involved in the lyric. Yeah, I, I found that Jarvis, and I've only talked to him a few times, but he's kind of like the quiet member of Scissor Fight, because or at least to me, from, that's that, that's a misnomer. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's interesting <laughs> to find out when I talk to you that he's involved in so much more than I thought he was, from lyric oh, yeah. writing to songwriting, and he's a very unassuming kind of modest guy. It yeah. seems he's always just kind of hanging out, having a beer, you know, and in. At the club, and uh, I, mean, I, I just never knew that about him. Actually, he's in deep behind the scenes. Okay, he's a heck of. A, we were talking about this too. He's a heck of a presence on stage. Yeah, uh, as you yeah. saw in the the live clip earlier. So the new album is out now. Like I said, an EP. It's been very well received. The reviews I see online, and I dig it a heck of a lot. Huge drum sound too from Rick. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, you know, I'm a drummer myself, and I front another band, but like that's one of the things. No disrespect that I'm usually listening for first and foremost. Then the guy beats the crap out of his kit. Yeah. Um, yeah, when yeah. I saw him at the Middle East. But how did that come about? Because I know through the grapevine there were other people potentially interested in pushing to, to release a Scissor Fight album. And you go with Salt of, the Earth, uh, Salt of the Earth Records, which is run by Scott Harrington. They seem to be doing a heck of a job. Yeah. What, how did that yeah, come about? The, the, uh, as soon as we put it out there online, you know, um, that we were, you know, going to get back and get at it again yeah he was the first guy who contacted us you know like immediately did you know him previously was he like a scissor fight uh, fan yeah he was he was just the first guy and he was like all over it you know you know live shows started happening before the that came out you know so nowadays everything you, you do is online so, yeah well someone else films it and you have no say in what gets released online right? and the so, cats you know, out of the bag back in the old days that wasn't the case. Here's my cassette demo. Check me out now. You know, like uh, you, like we had, a, we had, I think we had three or four new songs in that in the first gig we did a year ago. Yeah. Um, 
in the set live, you know. No one had heard them before. Did those all make the album? They did. Okay, yeah. okay. I was wondering if there's one, like, I, I imagine there's a couple ones you've been working on, or in the sessions before you built up to that those recordings that you kind of uh, well, there's, whittled. Yeah, the, we really kind of concentrated on those um, before we recorded, but like I said, they... they um, you know, they ended up online in multiple live videos of, of the full show. Yeah. Uh, so people were going to hear them, you know, before they were released on a record, you know, and which I guess is cool. I don't know. Yeah, well, it's a different <laughs> game now. Yeah. It's not like, you know, it's you can't, if you're going to play the songs live before it's out, re, out on a CD, there's, you, you know, they're just going to be out there. So Yeah, and they better it. sound good or you're kind of screwed. Yeah. That's the <laughs> thing, too. It's all, you got to step up the game. Um, by the way, we're going to do a riff tutorial because a couple of people, when I mentioned online through social media that uh, Jay was going to be here in the treehouse, we're going to do a riff tutorial in just a little bit to kind of end things. But um, speaking of, you know, social media online, I've watched a bunch of the videos, some of the live ones early on when you guys were first coming back. And uh, two things. It's funny that uh, Doug, who, who is replaced now, has stepped in for, for Iron Lung looks kind of a heck of a lot like him he's got the beard he's a big imposing you know mean looking dude yeah. so it was funny to see in some of the videos where a lot of people didn't even realize some of them or were curious like is that iron lung like not quite sure and you know clearly at least to me well it's not uh, that that position in that band calls for somebody like that you know oh yeah of course and, I, I agree and, yeah you know there's there is there's other people i can think of you know that that you know don't have that look at all and it just wouldn't make sense you know? yeah and, have some you know and business and, casual guy up there yeah. with his you know emo <laughs> yeah. glasses and a cardigan you know, how do you say it it's kind of like a uh, it's part it's of the branding a, it's almost. not about the individuals you know it's the the, the whole band yeah the is cohesive it, it, whole uh, yeah and, and um part of that is a big imposing bearded <laughs> yeah well he's part, yeah. i mean at the show he's like he's drinking whiskey and he's an imposing dude with tattoos and a foot long beard not to be messed with so it seems to work uh, but you know online and you've talked about this openly i've seen in the repeat cliche common seems to be the no iron lung no scissor fight yet i'm at the middle east show and people seem to be having a damn good time and, and yeah while i heard trash talk at first and you even talked to talked to me at one point in time saying what would you think of the of scissor fight getting back together and i said that'd be fantastic then you mentioned but without iron lung i'm like really yeah. and i admit i wasn't sold at first but having seen you guys the other night people are into it it sounds good it looks good yeah, um right. it seems people are coming around but how do you respond to some of the people out there who i don't want to call them the haters but who are confused confused um, well, first of all, I, I feel bad for them because they're missing out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's always going to happen. I mean, p replacing a singer who is like well-loved and kind of, you know, a character and iconic or whatever you want to call it is tough, you know? Of course. But, but so maybe, you know, it, part of the 10 year wait was waiting for the, the right guy you know and doug certainly is the the right the right guy yeah. and uh doing a heck of a job you know as is rick oh know? yeah yeah i was you know R rick is being a drummer myself I, at that show i was focusing on him watching him and he beats he beats the crud of the drums like i said he's oh, very yeah. fun to watch too and a solid drummer it's perfect you know it's just straight ahead four on the floor yeah phil rudd style awesome yeah I got oh, yeah. which brings me to the fact that there's a lot of bands in history that have had to replace their singers and it's worked. ACDC would be one of them, and there's well, well, probably the most famous. Yeah, I, yeah, and them. there's there's plenty of others actually. <laughs> yeah. um, but I want to touch upon so Doug, the band he was in was called where you found him was called Iron Chin. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yep. Because I just thought at first that was like a goofy nod to Iron Lung nickname. You know, yeah, the iron no, lung, no. those iron chin. Totally different. That's bizarre. So, the, yeah, uh, he was in that band with some other guys we know, and they were, I want to say they were more on the kind of, I don't know what you call it, like... Bubblegum pop? Oi. No. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, kidding. You know what I mean? Like the oi kind of street rock yeah, yeah. stuff. They kind of played with a lot like of... like the street dogs, those kind of bands, like the... Yeah, stuff like uh, that. Yeah. Iron chin is a... The name is from 
uh, a song by the Bruisers. Yeah, you know, okay. Bruisers, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, I've saw the rap ones. They were from Portsmouth, you yep. know. And uh, so that kind of vibe, you know. And um, But we played, you know, played a number of shows with them. And actually it was uh, Jarvis who went to see Iron Chin somewhere. I didn't go at this, this time. And they did a song where, because Doug, Doug used to play bass and sing. Yeah. And they did a song where um, uh, somebody else came up on stage and played bass and Doug just became the front guy. And that's where Jarvis was like, that's the guy. That was the selling moment. That was the selling Defining moment. moment. Yeah. yeah. That's so great. So we, um, you know, shortly after we, we started a, campaign of harassment to get him to join the band well that could have been yeah. too difficult to convince like hey do you want to sing for scissor fight yeah there's a bunch of people who would go to great lengths to to be in his shoes he, as he, tough as they are to fill yeah, in the yeah. case of iron lung well he yeah he was up to the task and um pretty excited about it being he you know i didn't know he was a long time fan oh see i didn't know that either that's it makes it even cooler yeah so he when he lived up in berlin new hampshire you know he, he, him and his buddies were all big scissor fight fans yeah so, now he's the guy yeah you know, yeah yeah so it's pretty cool yeah yeah you know? but uh, i was hoping like i said a couple of people had asked i went on my facebook page um people were asking uh, scissor fight acoustic just wouldn't work and a lot of times we'll have people performing here acoustic we're figuring since you have a little amp here i asked you to bring you could do a riff tutorial for the guitarists out there i don't know jack about guitar playing but i think mm -hmm. it would be interesting not only for myself but for others out there so i'm gonna get out of the way and it's your turn to further shine i could do a riff or two two how about like three or four sure <laughs> all right this is a uh, a little bit of how you play uh we ain't leaving which is uh one of the songs off the new ep um, and uh, the the intro part is like and then And then the chorus is. And then there's a, uh, the uh, middle break is. Uh, pretty much the whole part of that song. What do you, what do you tune to? Uh, the tuning is a uh, drop A tuning. So I believe it's uh, A, E, A, D, F sharp, B. Yeah, with uh, uh, 14 through 60 strings. Yeah. And um, that's a patented tuning. Scissor Fight is the only band that can use it. Not really. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and uh, so lately I've been using these Gretches. I have a, this Gretsch White Falcon and then uh, a Gretsch Black Phoenix, both big hollow bodies like this. Um, and uh, they're little, they have a little twang to them, which I find cuts through the, uh, the, the dense sound of the band pretty well um and i have this going into uh two marshall half stacks a uh a 79 uh jmp 100 watt with a matching cab and then a uh a more i don't know mid, early 2000s uh marshall mode 4 just a solid state amp and that goes uh into a matching cab and those are both on all the time 
Drunken Hangman, that's an old classic. It goes like this. That's the, uh, the verse, and then the chorus is... Chorus, and then the, um, there's a, uh, the whole break thing is just uh, a, a bunch of lead stuff over the verse riff. Which is that, and then uh, that's pretty much the whole song. Um, now I gotta think of a different one. <laughs> the the helicopter riff, a classic. <laughs> um, yeah. This is the break. <laughs> Let me do that one again. <laughs> That's the chorus of that. That other little lick in the beginning is... And that's the, uh, the little, little lick in there. Yeah. And the, uh, you know, if you got to know the solo, there's a, there's a famous, there's a, you know, an old, uh, a little old song hidden within the solo. Oh, really? Do you know what it is? I'll play the solo. Do you recognize it? Song I believe was called Shortening Bread. <laughs> this little baby loves shortening. Bread. Something like that, yeah. You know, one of my favorite little melodies. I like the lighter pick. side of Scissor Fight. Yeah, we like the thing is about Scissor Fight is always we've always liked to present a little bit of history. <laughs> so you know that song it goes like this. and chorus. All right, Jay, thank you very much for the riff lesson and ass kickery. Again, the album, brand new EP from Scissor Fight is out now. 
Chaos County on Salt of the Earth Records. Check it out. Now back to our pizza and whiskey, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Oh man, what else we got here? Some Don't of this stuff that. is just purely evil. Look at this. Don't it's like, drink that. <laughs> Mr. Oh, Boston, God. we just don't care anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Slow and low. Hotch Stadlers. Hotch Statters. I'm butchering your name. That's not good. But if you're out there, you should be sponsoring us because I actually do drink this stuff quite a bit. We heated this treehouse with a bunch of candles. That's how low fi the show is. No. So, uh,. So, Jay, what was it like uh, doing this interview in a treehouse? It's fucking stupid, man. It was it's all cramped and hot and shit, and Deke doesn't use body deodorant, so it's it's like, whew, man, I'm out of here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying not to laugh. <laughs> it's true, though, I'm not wearing deodorant. You know those free cologne samples sometimes in women's magazines? or I just, like, dab those under my arm occasionally. <laughs> At best, that's when I'm going to a wedding or church, which is never. Yeah. <laughs> Jay actually rode a wild boar all the way down here from New Hampshire. I rode it until it died. I knew he was on the way because I actually saw it in the news. There was like copters <laughs> flying around like, who is this lunatic? I'm just going to put my guitar and amp in somebody's Volvo. I don't know who owns <laughs> Yeah. Where's your driver at? Should I go call him? Driver! I borrowed this from Godsmack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Their whole audience fits in this now. <laughs> <laughs> Safe to say you're not opening for Godsmack anytime soon if this ever gets out. <laughs> 